Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, I'm David Godibadze and today we are going to dive into network address translation in Unify routers. Ubiquity recently introduced the NAT configuration control in their Unify network application, which now allows us to configure the NAT as we please. We are going to break down three main types of NAT configurations for Unify routers, NAT masquerade, NAT source and NAT destination. But first, let's talk about what happens if you don't use NAT at all. In this simple topology, traffic coming from the internal host will go through the Unify routers to reach its destination IP address on the internet. Once the packet leaves the router, it will reach the destination address through the internet router unless the ISPs in between drop the packets. The destination host will respond to the packet and send it back. Now, let's imagine the packet from the destination host is trying to reach us back. Can they find us? No, they have no idea where our internet IP is located. Private IP addresses, also known as RFC 1918 addresses, are not routable on the internet because ISPs don't route them. Internal traffic going through the router to the internet and the internet doesn't have slightest idea how to reach our private IP address here, which is 192.168.1.10, right? So that's why we want to enable not masquerade here because otherwise our source IP address from the inside network is going to be the same source IP address when we leave the router. So let's enable the NAT masquerade and this is what's going to happen. Our source IP address in the IP headers, when the packet leaves the router, the source IP address will be when interface IP address, which is 12.34.101.101 in our case. That is good because now the destination address who responds with the packet, they know exactly how to reach us because this is the public IP address and it is routable on the internet. Now, that masquerade allows us to do that to convert, to translate, should I say, our source IP address into interface IP address. So no matter what interface IP address you have, even if it's from the DHCP server, it's going to work. The source NAT allows us to use different IPs for different traffic. For example, if the engineering team goes to the AWS Azure, they can have one IP address, and this IP can be in the allowed list of the AWS or Azure access list. That way, only engineers can access these resources even through the public internet without the VPN. Now, the, if the engineering team is going somewhere else, let's say on the internet, they can have the second IP address, for example, 102 in my case. If guests and IoT traffic leaving the router, we can assign completely different IP, and again, for the, all the users, they have separate dedicated IP from the rest of the traffic. That way, we can make sure that uh, if guests or IoT traffic is doing something bad on the internet, your main IP address is not going to be blacklisted affecting your mail delivering or anything else. The destination NAT is a little bit different thing. You expect traffic to come to the router from the outside. Well, actually, not necessarily, but this is usually what people use it for. Destination NAT is the same as we call port forwarding on the Ubiquiti routers, but here you are not limited to which interface you are going to use for this NAT configuration, while in port forwarding, you are limited to use only outside interfaces for the incoming traffic. And I'm going to show you the examples how the destination NAT will act if we reach the router, which has the destination NAT configuration. For example, if the traffic comes to the IP address 12.34.101.101 on port 8080, the router can have the configuration, destination NAT configuration, should I say, to forward this traffic to the internal IP address 1.20 on the port 80. It doesn't have to be the same port. You can use different ports but you cannot switch the protocols. If it's TCP, it's TCP. If it's UDP, it's UDP. You cannot convert from TCP to UDP. It's only converting the ports. And if the traffic is coming from on the same IP address, but port 9443, again, this can be translated into completely different internal host on the different ports. And again, all the static IPs you have on the routers can be used within the destination NAT. For example, here, you can see that I have 102 and 101, right, at different ports. Everything this can be translated into any of the internal hosts. 
to forward this traffic. And I'm going to show you how to configure these things on the Ubiquiti Unified Routers right now. So here I have Unified Ultra, that is Gateway Ultra, I should, I should I say. And I have several subnets here. I have engineering subnets, guests, servers, and users, right? I'm going to go into NAT configuration now. In majority of the vendors, the NAT configuration is next to the firewall configuration or within the firewall configuration. The Ubiquiti, they decided to put the NAT configuration in the routing and not in the security. Now here, I have the default configuration, which is default NAT configuration that takes all the internal hosts and translate into public IP address of the interface once the traffic leaves the device. Now I'm going to delete it and I'm going to show you how to configure all three types of NAT manually, even if your NAT configuration is not there because someone deleted or you deleted or you want to have more control over the NAT, let's disable it and off. And this will delete all the NAT configuration, of course, apply changes. And now we don't have any of the NAT configuration. Now on the networks, we have four networks. In the NAT configuration, I can say any of the source network or I can actually create the IP group and then say, okay, translate only these source IP addresses. I want to translate all the networks. So I'm just going to create a new YouTube mask. Hey. I'm going to say interface, I want to translate into interface IP, should I say, not interface. It's going to be when one. And I want to translate all the source IPs. So in our case, it's going to be network. And then I'm going to choose the network, which network I want to choose. But if I don't choose that, it's going to translate everything. And again, on the destination, if I don't choose where I'm going, it's going to translate everything. So if you don't check these boxes, it will match all the traffic coming from the router and leaving from the primary interface. So I'm going to click add, and this is how the default uh, NAT configuration will work. It will j just take all the internal hosts and translates once it leaves the router. Now I can do the same for the WAN IP too, but I don't want to. I'm going to translate using the source IP address right now. So let's do the source. And it's going to be source not YouTube source not. And I want to translate, let's say, I want to translate into 103, not 101, but 103. When I leave the primary when router, that way I can choose. And I want to say that, you know, let's say, oh, what is this? Guests. I want to translate guests into 103. Let's do that. So 103 and the network source network is going to be guests here. Now, when guests leave the router, they will be translated into 103, except this rule is below the main NAT rule. So if we want specific traps to match the NAT and then overall NAT configuration, we have to move them between, we have to swap these places. So now if it's guests, they will translate, they will be translated into 103. But if it's everything else, including guests, they will be translated into 101, which is the main IP address. But because we have the match on the first line with guests, the guest traffic doesn't reach the second NAT rule and they will not be retranslated into 101 because of that. So it's, they're going to stay into 103. Now let's add the I don't know, let's say if, what if we want to translate the traffic? What if you want to translate this traffic? So you want to say if engineering is going to the AWS or Azure, I want to translate it into 101 or let's do, yeah, 101. Okay, let's do 101. That would be engineering to AWS, Azure. And you have to have the IP addresses of AWS or Azure somehow. And I want to translate into primary IP address interface. Source is going to be engineering. And the destination, destination, it's going to be whatever IP address you have from the Azure or AWS. If it's one IP, you just can plug it here. Let's say, I don't know, this is the IP. You can just paste it here. If it's more than one IP, you can create the IP group from here. And then say AWS IPs, right? And then you can uh, 
at one by one or subnet by subnet all the IPs you have for the AWS. That way, when you assign this and you add them, right, if engineering is going to the AWS destination, they will be translated into, into this IP. Now, I don't want to be translated into primary. No. I don't want to uh, I clicked something else. Hold on. Oh, it's still masquerade. Hold on. It's got to be source here. I mistake. Now, if engineering is leaving the router, they will be translated into 101. Again, let's move this a little bit up. And actually, on the mask, I don't, I don't like the mask. I'm going to delete that because it's messing up everything here. Now, if guests are going to the internet, there will be 103. If engineering team is going to the Azure, there will be 101. And let's do engineering, engineering going to the public internet. That's going to be 102. So let's again create the source NAT. YouTube. Engineering to public internet. Uh, they will be translated into 102. I think that was 102, right? Yep, 102. And again, source is going to be engineering team. And destination is going to be anything. Oh, too much? Okay. Let's delete a couple of symbols. Okay. Now, now. First, we want to match the engineering team go that goes to the AWS or Azure. Because of that, that rule has to be about the public internet rule of the engineering team. And then the way NAT works is that it first will do the NAT that is up and then the next if there is no match. When engineering team goes to the public internet, it will try to match this rule. And if there is no match, and obviously there is no match because guest is not the engineering team, right? Unify router will see, okay, let me see if this second rule match the traffic. The second rule says only destination AWS and nothing else. Well, if they go to the internet, but not to the AWS or the Azure, this second rule will not match. And because of that, it will continue trying to match the next and next, the next NAT rule. And finally, this rule will match because they are not going to the AWS, but they are going to somewhere else on the internet. So they will be translated into 102. And all the user traffic can be translated into 104. Now all the user traffic is all the rest users are going to be translated into 101. And I'm just gonna don't match anything and just add the rule. Now there is no match of the source or destination, which means they this is like any on a Cisco router or its firewalls or pretty much on any other vendor. You can put any, which means any of the destination of source. Here on Ubiquity, on Unified Routers, you, you don't do any. You just don't check don't, uh, check the box, which means any. And this is how the source NAT is configured. Now, let's do configuration of the destination NAT, because masquerade NAT we already did, source NAT we already did. Now, let's configure destination NAT. So let's say I want to receive the traffic on this IP and port, and then I want to translate this into the destination of the internal host. Let's say one of the hosts has that 20 IP address and is running the web server, test web server, and I want my developer whose IP I know to reach this destination. Let's go into destination, not, and let's do create entry. Now, if it's in the destination, developer access, accessing test web server. Okay. Uh, too much. Okay. Web server. Now I want to say uh, TCP because it's a web server. And I want to say destination interface is going to be primary one. And destination IP is what, what, what do we have? 101. So if, if anyone is coming to this destination, I want them to translate into, oh, first of all, I need to put this port, the 8080. This is going to be original destination port and original destination IP address. So we put them here. And now I want to translate this translated IP address. I want to translate this into, what was the IP address again? 
192. Oh, I don't have 182 network here, so I'm just going to translate into 110, 10.1.1.20. You know what? Let's pretend we have this IP address for the sake of, you know, this video. And the port 80. Now, I can add this rule and everyone who will reach this IP address on this port will be able to translate to reach the internal host. Now, the problem with that is anyone is free big rage. We don't want anyone from the internet to do that. We want to limit it to the developers. That's why here's the field source. I'm going to check this and I'm going to say, okay, only my developer can do that. And developer can be any of the IP. It can be VPN IP. It can be public IP, anything. So let's do, let's say that our developer's IP address is public IP address is this one. Apply changes. Only source IP address with 7.7.7.7 .7 that reach my IP address 12.34.51.101 on port 8080 will be translated into destination IP address 192.168.1.20. Now, important thing is that you should not forget that the NAT is not responsible for the routing. NAT has nothing to do with routing. NAT will not force traffic to go out the interface. NAT will not route the traffic. You already have to have routing in place for the NAT to work. The NAT is matching the traffic that is already going through the router or to the router if it's destination NAT. And if there is a match, it will do the action based on the configuration you have. But if you don't have the routing, NAT will not do anything. For example, in this scenario, I use this IP address, right? I don't have this IP address at, at all. If I go into networks, I don't have this IP address. So either I have to create this IP address, so it's going to be directly connected and put it in the routing table of the Unify, or if it's behind the VPN, I have to build a VPN. But don't expect for the NAT to route the traffic for you. That's not NAT's job. It simply matches the traffic and applies NAT rule if there is a match. So let's do one more thing. I want to do this 102 and the VNC port. Okay, let's go into routing again. NAT destination and the VNC port. This is just a name. You can name whatever you want. I think it's TCP if I'm not mistaken. But if I, even if I am, you can do whatever uh, port you want. I think it was 5190, yeah. And it, got, it goes to 2100, so. This is where it goes, and it's going to be the same port. Actually, you probably can uncheck this, and it will go to the same port, but just to make sure it, it doesn't do anything else. Now... If anyone reaches this public IP, they will be translated into internal IP address of this one. Again, you can add the source IP address here, and you should, unless you're publishing something for the public internet, maybe you have some isolated network, maybe you create the isolated network that doesn't have access to anything internally, and you have one test web server, you want to publish this web server because you don't care who's access, because, or maybe whoever access it, you don't have the IP source IP address of theirs. And and it's okay if you, if you have the isolated network and nobody's reaching that network from any of the other subnets, you can do that. Why not? Though th that network will not be able to go anywhere, right? And this is it. This is pretty much what the NAT configuration does on Unified Routers. If you have any questions, put them in the comments.